Thank you for visiting Pastor Wired TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWired.com. To the show. I am John Stetton with Pastor Wire. I have with me Ed DeRosa from Horse Racing Nation, Dan Cronin, Fat Bald Guy Racing, who ain't no more a fat bald guy, but FBG. <laughs> uh, so bald. We, we, we talked Kentucky Derby. We're going to talk Preakness. Uh, before we get to that, though, we're going we're gonna to quickly address and take a little vote amongst the three of us that I would call well-educated uh, opinions with our hearts in the right places when it comes to thoroughbred racing. So it'll be interesting to see how this little threesome shakes out here. But a lot of talk lately, and, and really every year lately, about the changing of the triple crown dates for the uh, betterment of the game, for more rivalries, for the betterment of horses, and just for, for a, a, a lot of different reasons. So I'd like us all to weigh in quickly and vote. Um, uh, Dan, why don't you start? What's your thought on changing the dates, pros and cons, and and, and where, where do you weigh in on that? I think we should. I mean, if it's for the betterment of the horse, and that's the way everybody's moving, and hey, I was completely against getting rid of the whip, you know, putting this stupid whip rule in. I think I might've been wrong on that. I mean, now that it's been in for a while, I think the jockeys have adjusted and uh, I don't think it's really changed much in racing. Uh, you know, I'm completely against getting rid of Lasix for one race and not the other race. And I always make fun of it on my on my sheets because one race you're allowed to have it on Saturday, the next race you're not, then you are in the next race, then the next race you're not. I mean, I think it's all ludicrous. Uh, but I think for for the horse running back in two weeks with high level horses, to me we have to stop it. If it was a perfect world, and I know it's not, I would change the Preakness to Memorial Weekend, which is four weeks from the Derby. And then I would run the Belmont somewhere the, around July 4th weekend, preferably four weeks, then five weeks. That's how I would do it. I don't, I don't like the whole stretch it out through the summer and, and get in the way of the Haskell and the Travers. But that way, it wouldn't really get in the way of those races. Um, you know, maybe they'd have to adjust a little bit, but I don't think they would. And and I just think, you know, two weeks is we're seeing. I mean, the only horse running back is Mage. I mean, nobody else is even running. So I I, I think that's got to be tweaked. I, and yes, it's for the betterment of the horse. It, it is. And the money the money goblins need to just suck it up and realize that it needs to be moved. Mr. DeRosa, where do you where do you weigh in on that? Uh, the change I would make uh, would not be in the dates, but in the purses. Uh, I'd like, and, and maybe that doesn't work, and then we we go to Dan's idea or someone else's. But uh, a buck and a half for the middle jewel, the Triple Crown, just just isn't cutting it anymore. I mean, that Arkansas Derby is this purse. The Rebel is a million and a quarter. Uh, th this just is not is not money to entice people to race. And the Belmont with, uh, you know, it being unique with the mile and a half, I would say needs a bump as well. Uh, and I'm not saying this to name drop. I know between the three of us, we know everybody, but I want to cite my source. I spoke with Tom Durkin, who certainly knows a thing or two about the Triple Crown. And I asked him, would he move it? It's a hot topic. Wanted to get his thoughts. And he said no, 
And one of the things that he pointed out, given his experience having called the race for NBC, was that calendar date matters. Now we know with the Derby, it's never moving. It's the first Saturday in May, unless there's a pandemic, like that's in stone. But the Preakness does have some permanency in that third Saturday in May slot. And when you start talking about Memorial Day or first Saturday in June, uh, now all of a sudden, depending on the calendar, you're maybe four weeks, maybe three weeks from the Derby, it changes because just depending on with May having 31 days, where that first Saturday falls has an effect on where Memorial Day is in June. So to me, that really resonated with me that the Preakness has a place the third Saturday in May. NBC certainly likes it there. If they wanted it moved, it would be moved without a doubt. So to me, let's bump up the purse and see if that attracts a few more people. Horsemen know how to point for a race or races. So if the money's right, they'll have their horse ready for two races in three weeks. I tend to agree with that. You know, for a long time, I had the traditionalist, hard-headed approach that leave it alone. And this year, I don't, I don't remember who it was. Somebody tweeted out a, a, a good argument for, for moving. And I said, you know, I'm really going to give it some hard thought. And I, I, and I did. I deliberated long and hard on it. And I came back to uh, how I originally felt, not, not, not moving the races. And, and, and this is why. Uh, you, you know, to me, I've been around a game a, a, a long time. I've seen, what, I think four Triple Crown winners? No, five. Secretariat, Affirm, Seattle Slough, American Fair, and Justified. It's a doable thing, okay? Historically, when you look back at the Triple Crown, it's kind of always been a little bit streaky. You know, we had a whole bunch way back when, when Citation did it. Then we had that long drought until Secretariat did it. Then we had another, and then there were a couple right there with the uh, Affirmed in Seattle Slough. Then we had that long that drought until American Pharaoh did it. And then Justify came back and did it close to that you know, we've had a lot of horses, a lot that came really close. Um, it's doable. It's supposed to be hard. Uh, it's supposed to take some great horsemanship to bring your horse back two weeks later and then three weeks later at the grueling Belmont distance. Uh, but it is it is doable for the right horse in the right barn and, and, and approached the right way. Uh, so I'm, I'm really for leaving it alone. I don't think that changing it, I think the problem with racing is too many stakes, too many different, you know, options, not enough horses. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know that, that moving the, the, the races apart more will create more rivalries and more competitiveness and, you, you, you know, bigger fields. We see small fields in a lot of the stake races now. You know, it's just it, it's it's uh, you know you know a sign at times. I think racing has now John. John, issues. I'll say I'll say one thing that I didn't mention. It also by moving it creates a way better undercard. Because think about all the horses that ran on Derby Day, and they're making them all run without Lasix now, which is don't get me started. But <laughs> if if all those 40 or 50 or 60 horses could then come back to Baltimore or have the option to come back to Baltimore. I mean, I think Kenny McPeak brought one of them off the two week layoff. Uh, other than that, nobody comes. I mean, I think you're not only excluding Derby horses, you're excluding every horse that ran on that card. And there was tons of stakes that Friday and Saturday and you look at all these stakes at Pimlico, you would probably have 20, 30, 40 horses coming to run again if you ran four weeks later. So it's fair, not fair just point. the pre- No, you're fair I agree point. with that. Yeah, that's a fair point, but I'll throw this out there. Look at the Pimlico special. I mean, I remember when the Pimlico special drew a big field and was a prestigious race that top horses pointed for. Um, it's not really that way anymore. It's a, 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 almost a, a second or even third tier older horse oh, race. Yeah, it used to be you know. on uh, ABC the week before. 
Right. I mean, it was it was it was it was an event. The Pimlico special it was, you know, so, you know, the game is changing and I don't know that the changing of the spacing of those races is going to help it. So I'm, I'm a nay on that, you know, and, and I'm, I might be in a minority uh, and Ed's a nay for di- maybe different reasons. We, we, we might be in a minority on that, but yeah. I, I, I'd like to see more money at it. I mean, you mentioned. The I like that idea. idea. Good idea. Ed. I, I like, like that. that idea a lot, actually. Uh, obviously, winning the triple crown is sort of the the crowning achievement. Pardon the pun, but you know, when when I was not to be, you know, that guy, the the, the good old days. But I remember growing up when they had the Chrysler Triple Crown Challenge, and then I right. think it was Visa after that. It meant something to place in all three races. Like that was an accomplishment in and of itself. And part of that reason is because there was some good money attached. Right. And now there are so many races, uh, you know, you both brought that up, but you know, the Ali Sheba is a relatively new race on Derby weekend. And that certainly takes away from a race like the Pimlico special. And you have a race like the Pat de Mayo, which is basically a reconstituted Derby trial. Well, two generations ago, the Derby trial was actually a Derby prep race. Right now it's a one turn mile race on the Derby undercard that gets a lot of other three-year-olds that won't go to the Preakness to Dan's point two weeks later. Then on Belmont day, you have the easy goer and Woody Stevens for three-year-olds seven furlongs and a mile and a 16th. That absolutely takes away from the Preakness. It used to be, if you had a 30 to one shot, you might take a shot because it's the Preakness and it's a big race, but now you have so many options to run for $500,000 where you can be, you know, seven to two instead of 30 to one for a million and a half. So I get it from a business standpoint, guys are just making, guys and gals are just making other decisions, but you know, it, 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 the tradition just isn't cutting the mustard anymore for the Preakness. It works for the Derby. You know, the, the purse is fine for that. People want to be in the Derby, but for the Preakness, it, it I mean, 3 million minimum. I agree. I, I think that's a really good point, a really good idea. And I I, I I agree wholeheartedly with that. You know, I never really looked at it that way. And then just staring at the at, at the purse, you know, with the PPs up in the split screen on my on my 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 computer here. And I'm like, yeah, 1.5 is 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 light for the preakness nowadays. You know what I mean? It's just it's almost looks out of whack to me now that I'm thinking about it, you know. Yeah. With the, of some other races and and the prestige that this race you, you know really should have in the history that it has 1.5 is really low trips with pick six king john Stetton. it's one of the best tools in horse racing for any level of player it's your second set of eyes spotting troubled trips betting angles track trends Horses to watch and favorites to fade. Ten figs, ticket structure, and more. At Tracking Trips, you're a friend with benefits. Not a member? You must hate winning money. Join Tracking Trips now. Visit PassTheWire.com and we'll see you in the winner circle. Remember, nobody does it better. Known agenda for St. Elias Stable. 
Florida Derby winner, known agenda. Dan Omen here with some exciting news. The RF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Nobody does it better.